A number of people have asked me if there's a way of controlling external processes from within Access. By external processes, I'm talking about running scripts outside of Access. That would include BAT, CMD, and PowerShell scripts, and even FTP scripts using Windows FTP.exe command line interface. Hello, my name's Adrian Bell. I sometimes go by the name of Neopar on the forums. I'm here with another Access MVP, Crystal Long, and we're going to talk about automating and scripting processes within Access. For the purpose of this particular demo, we're going to focus on using FTP. Now, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, is the way most people send and receive files across the internet. You might have an FTP service with an account name, but it's not on your own network, so you can't just move files across easily. So you use File Transfer Protocol. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at running a script and we're going to show how Access can build that script and then execute it. And when it's finished, it'll clear it away and delete the file. So let's first look at the script. This is the data that's going to be found in the table within Access. On the right hand side here is the resultant script. Now that's a script. Everyone knows scripts are complicated and difficult to deal with. So what we're going to do is have a quick look at what that looks like a little bit more graphically. So this particular script, and it's, this is just an example script that we're going to use to show what can be done. It's going to make a connection to the remote FTP server. It's going to set the access mode to binary instead of ASCII, which is the default. The reason we do that is that when you have binary files like executables, JPEG files, all sorts of others, they can get mucked up if they're transferred using the ASCII mode. We're going to make a folder called test and select it. Make it the current folder on the remote system. We're going to send a file to the server. Now we've got these different names. It's going to be sent across. It's going to be renamed and sent back. So we're going to rename the file on the server. We're going to get the file from the server into a new file name back again. And then we're going to remove both the file and the folder, the new test folder, from the remote server. And then we'll have a quick look and show that the two files, the aclogo.jpg and the backagain.jpg files are both the same. So they haven't lost or gained anything in the whole of that process. In Access, we will look and we'll see the bits that we're interested in all type F. This is the FTP process that we're looking at today. To run this database, we use the add-ins toolbar, or ribbon, I should say, and we have a bunch of options. The one we're interested in today is test FTP. Before I run that, I'm just going to show you the log file of this running. When we finish looking at it, I hit any key and it finishes. So from there, we've seen that it's copied the file across, it's renamed it, and it's sent it back. If we now look in the folder where it, that's in, we have now see that we not only have the aclogo.jpg, and I'll get the properties of that, we also have a new file, backagain.jpg, and I'll get the properties of that. You'll notice that the size of that file is exactly the same size, 17,854 bytes, which is a fairly good indication that this has been sent across and brought back without any harm coming to it. After seeing that, we have a quick look here at this spreadsheet shows the difference between the data before, the template data, and the data after, which is the actual data. You'll notice the template here is false. In here, there are only three lines that have replaceable parameters. These percent %fs, percent %ac, percent %pw, these are replaceable parameters. And in the code, which I'll show you in a minute, replace those parameters with the actual values that we need. On the left hand side you've got the template, on the right hand side are the actual values as converted by the code and created into the script file. Alright, I'll go to the code now. So you can see the three lines here give us the information that we're going to be using. If we remember back from the spreadsheet, we've got the percent %fs, percent %ac and percent %pw, that's FTP server, account and password. And they will be set in the code to these values here. That is obscured, the password, but it comes out eventually as public pw like that. The code starts, calls set strings, which basically does a bunch of things, but all we're interested in is the strfo, which is the folder that the file is running in. These two files, they're strings of file names. They are set because this will only work when it's given a file name with a .txt at the end, which is why we start with this one and then we rename it to str file when we're done. Okay, that just clears files away. Here we come to the first fairly important part. This is where 
it does a replacing of the parameters. And you'll notice that you've got the percent %fs there, percent %ac and percent %pw. They get replaced with the values that we saw earlier. That gets stored in strcmd. Then we build strsql, which actually has a reference to that. It's going to actually say percent %c1, and that percent %c1 is going to be replaced in this line with the cmd file that we created. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start that running and stop at that point. Let's scroll up so you can see. And I'm now going to look at strsql. And because it's hard to see in there, I'm going to take it into another window. And that is the actual SQL code that it's going to be running to create the values on the right hand side. I'm just going to put an extra space in there so that it wraps. Right, I've just pasted that in. I had to scroll it to see it all. There's a wide line there, but you'll see that this part takes the CMD1 field from the original and replaces FS with Access Consultant, FTP dot, blah, -de blah, AC with the account, and PW with the password. Coming back to the code window, I'm going to take that breakpoint off. We're going to run it step by step. We're going to clear the table in case there's anything, and we're going to execute that code. At this point, it may help for me to go back and look at this table. And you see all the templated ones with a tick in the template box. And it's just created these new ones here. And you'll notice that they haven't got the replace parameters in. They've already been replaced. This is what is going to be used to create the script file. So again, check and kill that file. And now we're going to create the script file. And you'll notice that the file itself is strtemp, which is a script ftp.txt, not the eventual name the actual script.ftp, which we're going to use. Now I'm going to name that, and just to make it clear, I'm going to switch back to the folder which shows this, and that has now been renamed to script.ftp. And that has exactly what we had in there. We go back to here, and I'm going to clear that data from the table. It's no longer required because we've created the script file, and then I'm going to do a prompt for the user, which is straightforward. And you'll notice, when seeing that prompt, all those records that we saw a second ago have already been deleted. Now I'm going to create the command file that I want to run. And this I will also show elsewhere because it's all a bit complicated. It's one long line, but we won't see it in there easily. So I'll switch back to the text pad window and you'll see that it's wrapped because it's too long. We're going to start cmd.exe. If we were to go straight to ftp.exe, it would run and disappear before you had a chance to see it. So for demo purposes, it's as complicated as this. It needn't always be. That just sets me color. That says run this program and then finish. And the program is start, which is a part of the CMD. It's a, a command within CMD. I'm going to call the window FTP test. I'm going to go to the folder where the access program is running in. Maximize, wait, B, I forget. And then I'm going to put an enter there so that you can see that as it is. And that's essentially the command that we're going to run. Notice the ampersand ampersand pause at the end. That prompts for a key to be hit before the window closes. Otherwise, we're running FTP and using that script, script.ftp. If I go back to my Windows Explorer, that's exactly the name of the file. So we go in here, and I'm going to say shell wait. That is basically going to run the command and wait until it finishes before it allows the code to continue, because I'm going to then delete the file when it's finished, and I don't want to delete the file until after it's finished. And we'll see this again. It's run. When you compare this with the data in the script file, which we've got a copy of there, then you can see all of the commands that are run and the responses from the FTP server in this script. For now, that's all we need. Now it's come back, lose that window. If it exists, which of course it will, then kill that file. And that file, as you probably remember, is a script.ftp. So at the moment, script.ftp is there. I'm gonna run that, and then we're all finished, so I'm gonna allow that to completely finish. Go back to here and you'll notice that script.ftp has disappeared. We are now finished with that part of the demo. Right, Crystal, do you have any questions on any of that? I do have a question, Adrian. I noticed that you used shell wait. Is that like shell? Yes, it is. Very much so. In fact, one of the things about shell is that as soon as it finishes starting the process, the rest of the VBA continues. In this case, what I needed was for that process to finish before the next line, because the next line is to say, delete the script file. Shell wait is something I've written myself, but it uses an operating system interface. This is shell wait. I'm not going to go into it detail here, but that's inside the attachment. It includes that code. So that's pretty well what it is and why it was used in place of the, the, the more standard shell. Okay, okay. By the way, I like that ampersand, ampersand pause on the end of your command. 
Cool, yeah. That's not something I would have needed to include if the command itself had been a CMD script, which then itself called the FTP script. That would be the normal way of doing it. But for the demo, I wanted to focus on the FTP script and not have other scripts getting involved. I tried to put it into a single command straight from access and the ampersand ampersand pause puts a pause on the screen so that it doesn't disappear before anyone gets a chance to look at it. That's all it does. Well, thanks, Adrian. I really like this. This is great. I can see a lot of uses. Well, thank you. The idea is to show a template for people to build on. As you know, and your comment to me earlier offline, that in this spreadsheet, there's only three replacement parameters. That's because it's for a demo. You can have an access database which has a form which says, what file do you want to send? What file do you want to receive? And they could then use those as replaceable parameters instead of just the file server name and the account credentials. They could all be used as replaceable parameters. You can do all sorts of things. And the power of this is, is just really up to people to use their own capabilities to use the flexibility of it. At the last Microsoft MVP Summit in November 2015, Crystal and I were interviewed by Microsoft's Channel 9 about free tools and resources for access. For those who are interested, a link to that presentation is in the video description. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Adrian showed us the method he uses to substitute parameters in batch files that can run from the command prompt or be triggered from VBA to control external processes such as FTP to transfer files. This is a great technique and nice to have FTP code too. Adrian's article and download is available free on Bytes. A clickable link is in the video description. Great job, Adrian.